everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And today in this video, we are going to be discussing Wing Chun's relationship with its primary competitive drill, Chi Sao. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and show your support. And of course, if you really like the video, uh, hit that bell button so you get notifications for when I upload uh, new videos, which we're going to be shooting for doing like at least once a week on this channel, at least for the time being. Of course, before I get too deep into the discussion of Chi Sao and Wing Chun, I want to first kind of talk about my relationship with Wing Chun so that you can understand where I'm coming from in this like opinion that I'm going to share. So I originally got introduced to Wing Chun through another art that when I was relatively young, I took up Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. And as I went through the system, I eventually got certified as an instructor in that art. And that is the primary philosophy that I teach. It's the foundation for my entire school. Shortly after becoming certified as a Jeet Kune Do instructor, I became curious about Jeet Kune Do's roots. See, Jeet Kune Do originally started off as sort of a hybrid system of Wing Chun and eventually evolved into something very different. But I was curious about that initial origin, and I felt that if I learned a little bit of Wing Chun, it might give me more insight into the art that I was teaching. My initial goal was to study Wing Chun just academically. I thought, well, I'd learn the first couple forms and, and then I, that, that would be enough for me to kind of get a taste for it and, and then go back to doing what I was doing. But much to my surprise is I really liked Wing Chun. That as I started to study it, I found that there was a lot of little details that I wasn't quite getting in the other martial arts that I was studying. So... I continued to study. I just kept studying it because it kept being interesting. And after several years of studying Wing Chun, I got certified as an instructor in that art as well. And so now in my martial arts school, I have many classes that we teach, but, they, but I include Jeet Kune Do and a Wing Chun class, two different classes that you can take. So I teach both on the regular and I have uh, several students in both. So let's get into it. So first, for those of you who don't know what Chi Sao is, Chi Sao is a game that Wing Chun practitioners play. You really have to watch it to fully understand it, and really you have to play it to really understand it. But effectively, it is a hand-trapping game that we play that is intended to help us hone our close-range fighting skills in uh, Wing Chun in general. Uh, that is what... Chi Sao is. It is a game. So it is like playing chess or playing slap hands or any other game that you might play. It is a game. But <laughs> the kind of reason why this video is being made is that I see a disturbing number of Wing Chun practitioners using Chi Sao as a replacement for sparring. I've even had people tell me online that Chi Sao is Wing Chun's version of sparring. That's, that's a real dangerous thought, and that's why, why Wing Chun is getting in trouble, is that kind of mindset. Back in Ip Man's day, Wing Chun was called the king of the challenge match, and by that, they meant that whenever someone stepped up to Wing Chun to challenge a Wing Chun, pr Chun practitioner in a fight, they would lose. That Wing Chun guys were really good at fighting. Fast forward to 2020, and you'd be hard-pressed to find many videos online of Wing Chun guys winning in fights. Almost any time you go to YouTube and you type in Wing Chun versus whatever, the whatever beats the shit out of Wing Chun. So what happened to us, man? Why is it that that back in the day, Wing Chun kicked everyone's ass and now Wing Chun doesn't work anymore? Well, it's that change in mentality. I was reading a book on Yip Man that was really interesting where they kind of interviewed people who had trained with him and um, what surviving like family members he had and kind of discussed who Yip Man was as a person. And one of the stories that really stood out to me, which I don't necessarily agree with, but it definitely gives you insight on how Yip Man thought, was that Yip Man would walk through a uh, like the town with his student, and then he'd call out some horrible insult to the biggest guy he could see. 
And when the biggest guy turns around and looks at him, he pointed at a student like, oh my God, can you believe that guy said that? And that would cause a fight between his student and this huge man. And of course, that's a horrible prank to play on somebody. Um, but it also shows something really unique about his like teaching method. That very much fighting was an important part of study. That he would go out and pick fights for his students. That shows quite a lot of um, the way that he looked at Wing Chun and martial arts as a whole. I one time was at an international Wing Chun uh, martial arts convention. And I had this Quebec guy come up to me. A uh, guy from Quebec, sorry. Um, and he asked me a really weird question. He said, why are you Americans so concerned with application? And that that sentence blew my mind. Because I'm like, how are you not concerned with application? Why would you study a martial art and not care about whether or not it worked? Like, that blew my mind. Um, and we had a conversation about it, and I kind of joked about, you know, the fact that Americans, we, we like to fight. Um, but but it, it, you see those two moments. You see this historical moment with Yip Man in which he's out there literally picking fights just for the sake of testing his students' grit. And then we have modern Wing Chun where I literally have someone ask me, why do I even care about if it works? So there we see this tremendous disconnect from our roots and what we are now. You know, they, they say that Tai Chi used to be a really effective, like, fighting style. And now it is effectively like a, you know, a low-key yoga that is just kind of, you just kind of use it to keep the blood flow. And I'm really afraid that Wing Chun is heading in that direction. And I think I know one of the biggest reasons why. And it's Chi Sao. Now, before I go too deep into it, I want to make one thing clear. So please hear me on this. If you do not practice Chi Sao, you do not know Wing Chun. Wing Chun and Chi Sao are inseparable. They are, they are a part of the same. Um, so, so I am not arguing that we should stop doing Chi Sao. It is important to the development of Wing Chun. However, what we do have to stop is using wing, you sorry, using chi sao as a way to determine our skill in Wing Chun. There's this kind of thought that's been kind of quietly existing in the Wing Chun community for a while that if your chi sao is better than someone, then you're a better fighter. And that could not be a more absurd concept. I can easily disprove it, like with a simple thought experiment. If you are really good at Chi Sao, do you think you could be beat um, Mike Tyson in a fight? Be honest. <laughs> of course you can't, right? There's like a handful of people who can beat Mike Tyson in a fight. Do you think Mike Tyson is any good at Chi Sao? Mike Tyson doesn't even know how to Chi Sao. I promise you right now, if me and Mike Tyson Chi Sao i totally kick his ass at Chi Sao. But if me and Mike Tyson boxed, I'd probably get knocked out in the first round. So clearly there is not a one-for-one -one relationship between being good at Chi Sao and being good at fighting. And that is the disconnect that we are missing. When we look at the days when Wing Chun was called the king of the challenge match, what we see is Wing Chun practitioners meeting up with people of other arts. Ooh, this is so crucial. Meeting up with people of other arts to test their art on the regular. They would have to do it on rooftops because it was illegal and they would get in trouble if they got caught by the cops. But they would fight often and most importantly against other arts. Here's the thing. No matter what your reason for not sparring, the real reason is you're trying to protect your ego. Is that when you put on gloves and spar somebody, your inefficiencies in technique become exposed incredibly quick. And you may be afraid of being hurt. You may be afraid of concussions or, or what have you. But the real reason why you don't spar, and the only reason why people don't spar, um, with the exception of like someone who's very old, uh, 
is that you're trying to protect your ego. So how do we change this? How do we change our relationship with Chi Sao? And how do we change, bring Wing Chun back to being the king of the challenge match? Well, it starts with you. You have to be the change you want to see. You got to put that ego to the side and recognize that you, if you come from a school that exclusively Chi Sao's, uh, well, you've, you've got to, um, you've got to step up and start sparring. And I'm going to tell you something that's kind of uncomfortable. But there's hope. When you first start sparring, you're going to get beaten up. The first time you put on gloves and you go against a boxer or a kickboxer or a Muay Thai fighter, uh, yeah, you are going to get beaten up. But if you keep at it, you will learn to apply your Wing Chun. That you will learn about inherent mistakes and misconceptions that you had about fighting and those will be quickly wiped away. That every single time you get punched or kicked or need, you're going to sit there and go, oh, that doesn't work there. And every single time you successfully get a hit, you will get to learn about how to effectively apply your art. I am really tired of coming across Wing Chun people who just do forms and just do Chi Sao. The reason why Wing Chun is no longer the champion of the challenge match is because we aren't fighters anymore. That's the truth. That a lot of Wing Chun people, I venture to say most Wing Chun people at this point, are in a state of straddling being a fighter and doing something like Tai Chi. And if you want Wing Chun to be as badass as it appears in the movies, if you want Wing Chun to be the king of the challenge match, you, me, and all Wing Chun practitioners need to put in the effort to start sparring again and put on gloves. I'm not saying that we throw out Chi Sao. Chi Sao is an important developmental tool. But we need to stop viewing Chi Sao as a test of our skill. Just because someone can beat you in Chi Sao doesn't mean that they are a better fighter than you. The only way to see who's a better fighter is to put on some gloves and fight. For transparency's sake, I teach classes um, six days a week at my school, and we spar all six days. Literally, every single day ends with a open mat that allows people to spar, and many times sparring is a required part of each class that you're in. So my ultimate conclusion is not that we should stop doing Chi Sao. It's simply that we need to spar far more often than we do Chi Sao and put Chi Sao back where it belongs as a game to help improve our skills and not as the end goal of studying Wing Chun. Once again, if you like this kind of content, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell button so you get notifications of when I put up new videos. Like I said, I'm hoping to do them about every week, so hopefully we can keep to that schedule. If you live in Indianapolis and you want to come study with me, all the information to do so is in the description box down below or on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.